Those that know me know that there's two things that I never pass up. That's free lunch and free lumber. So when a friend of mine said, hey Ron, I've got some lumber here in the garage that my wife wants to get rid of, would you like it? I jumped on the chance and Penelope and I went and picked it up. Turns out it was some 16 foot two by sixes that he wasn't gonna use for a project. I was more than happy to take them off his hands because I'll find a use for them somewhere. While we were loading them up and I was strapping them down, he happened to ask, I heard you know how to read a tape measure. To which I replied, I know my numbers. He said, come look at this. That's not going anywhere. Hey guys, welcome back to the shop to another build. So my friend asked me if I could build a, uh, a place to hang his coats and put his boots as he walks into this entryway from his garage. And the space is 37, 38 inches wide and he's got about 16 inches of place. So yeah, I designed something for him that's gonna be able to have some coat hooks on it to hang coats and uh, a little bench to sit on and put your shoes on. It's gonna be a great little project. Uh, I'm excited about it, uh, something I haven't done before. So I'm always up for the challenge. So this is the plan. It's going to be six foot tall. It's going to be half inch MDF back with quarter inch uh, birch plywood cut into six inch strips uh, glued to it to make it look like a shiplap back. Uh, he has a three gang light switch that I'm going to have to cut around and extend the lights out, uh, the switches out and reinstall them. This is going to be a uh, 16 inch wide uh, front to back and 37 and a uh, half inches wide bench top and it's just going to be a face frame cabinet underneath with a center divider and they want to be able to slide some baskets that they have underneath there just open bottom because they have a nice floor to go under it so pretty simple project as you can see it's just straight on the back and then a bench that comes out and then this will be cabinet paint grade uh, birch three-quarter birch that he can paint I'm gonna stain the top and install it and just make it where he can remove it to be able to paint all of this, whatever color he wants to match the house. And then he'll be able to hang however many coat hooks he wants to up here, have the coats hanging down and the boots that slide in the baskets underneath. So it's gonna be a great project. I'm gonna get started. Using my track saw, I cut the half inch MDF at six feet. And then I switched over to three quarter plywood and cut those at 15 and a quarter. I cut two just in case uh, I had an oopsie somewhere, which fortunately I cut this because I did have an oopsie. A cross cut on this uh, piece of three quarter plywood. And I don't recommend that you make this cut unless you're confident that you can make it but i do recommend that you always always add a riving knife um, which will stop the the piece of wood from kicking sideways and potentially coming back at you what they call a kickback but my saw needs some work as you can see it's wore out my riving knife is not not lined up and won't stay tight so i, I i'm gonna put a little shim in there just to get it straight until I've got time to fix it. So I did want to say, use a riving knife if you're going to use a table saw. It's much safer. That way it'll prevent kickbacks. I'm not a professional, so consult your local professional carpenter, but I like to keep a lot of pressure on the piece that's against the fence and not worry so much about the part that's being cut off that piece. So these are being ripped to 13 and 3 quarters. And I got all three of my cabinet carcass pieces cut out of the one cutoff from the three quarter plywood. I ripped my face frame pieces to inch and a half. I left them random length because I'm gonna cut these off later. Always checking for the straight side of the board to go against the fence before I started ripping them. Then thinking that I only needed one 
longer piece for the face frame, I cut this at just over an inch and a half so I could run it through the table saw to size it later. In hindsight, I should have cut this twice as wide and you'll find out why later. This is ripping the MDF down to 37 and a half inches wide. My saw won't cut that wide, so I had to subtract the cutoff, taking into account for the blade width to get the right width. Using the table saw sled, I cut out a notch in the back of the middle piece for the long strip that's gonna go at the top to support it. This is where I messed up when I said I had an oopsie because I cut the top and the bottom and I only needed a notch on the top. Luckily, I'd cut those extra pieces, so I just ripped one down and then cut just a notch on the top. Yep, it fits. Then using the pocket hole jig, I drilled a couple of pocket holes and the one strip for the back. Using some scrap spacer strips to hold the back strip in place and then clamping it, I glued it and then making sure that my pocket holes were pointed towards the back so they'd be against the wall and never be seen, I screwed screws, drove screws, screwed screws, whatever. I screwed it in to hold it in place. I wiped down my glue squeeze out, checked to make sure everything was pretty square, and then put that, whoa, that piece has one notch cut in it. Centered it up, countersunk some screws, and screwed it in. All right, so situation is, is I forgot to cut another, uh, another inch and a half strip for my face frame, and I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to lose my factory edge on, on both sides of the, the plywood. So I cut a strip off, uh, marked it off and cut it off with my circular saw as straight as I could. But now I'm gonna run it through a table saw to get a straight edge on it. If I were to just put it against the fence, it's still gonna be crooked. So what I'm gonna do is take this, this straight edge on this double-sided tape and I'm gonna take this piece of plywood to the side of this and then run the whole thing through the table saw. So this will be the reference edge. The saw blade will cut a straight edge on here and then I can Mark, I can uh, move the fence over to an inch and a half and cut a strip out. Never done this before. I've seen it done a couple times, but I'm interested to try it. So let's see how it works. Earlier when I said that I wish I would have cut that one strip twice as wide, this is why I wouldn't have had to do this. But learning this trick, and it worked great, makes me even a better carpenter. So I'm going to remember this one for the future. Sometimes half a yard stick is better than a full yard stick, said no one ever. <laughs> but I used glue and some 18 gauge brad nails to attach the face frame to the carcass.
This is gonna be painted, so it wasn't entirely necessary, but I wiped down the glue squeeze out and then took it over to the back part for a test fit. I'm gonna be using these half-inch tabletop fasteners to hold the bench down. I'm using a biscuit joiner to cut some grooves in for those to attach to. More on that later. I glued the carcass to the back MDF panel clamped it down, checked it off for square, and then I countersunk some two inch screws through the back of the panel into the carcass to hold it in place. Man, I could really use a planer. Until then, I use a router and a three quarter mortise bit to flatten these two by eights. My right arm's getting huge. And then it's off to every woodworker's absolute most favorite thing, sanding. The router leaves some lines in the, in the wood that I had to sand out in order to get it smooth, which makes edge joining on my homemade edge jointer so much easier whenever the face is flat. I ran it through here a couple of times and then biscuit joined it to make the bench top. Pro tip. If I were a pro, an old reciprocating saw blade makes an excellent glue spreader. Hmm, forgot what I was looking for. Oh yeah, it's a wet rag to wipe this glue squeeze out because glue and stain don't mix very well. Blue painter's tape stop the glue on the bottom side of the bench top from sticking to my little sled that I milled it with. Or knows I don't want to have to sand all that off the back of it. Then I just raised the sled up a little bit with these blocks so that I was able to get clamps from underneath and on top to prevent it from cupping. I took some fine sawdust that came out of my sander, mixed it with a little wood glue, made some homemade wood filler that I then used to fill all the holes that the 18 gauge Brad Miller left. Now this is a little thick. Uh, I had to come back later and make it a little thinner before I sanded it down. Back on the top after the glue dried, I flipped it over and using this two inch uh, bottom flattening bit that I got in the mail from Amazon, magically appeared. It was great. This thing hogged out so much material. It didn't take long at all to get this thing flat and then it was off to sanding again. Under the watchful eye of my bearded brother-in-law, oop, don't forget to take the staples out of the lumber. You'll ruin a saw blade that way. I cut these to length. And then, using a half inch roundover bit, I rounded over the top and the bottom on the front and just the top on the sides. The bottom and the sides are gonna be flush with the carcass and the back I just left flat. I wiped it down with mineral spirits to get any dust off of it. While that was drying, I gently sanded each side of these quarter inch shiplap pieces on an angle to create a shadow effect. I cut these off camera because apparently if you accidentally push photo instead of video, when you push record, it takes a very short video. I like to use a pencil to stir stain you never want to shake it because that introduces air bubbles in it, which will cause issues whenever you go to put it on.
speaking from experience, always apply it in the direction of the grain and wipe it off in the direction of the grain. Otherwise you get splotches. Moving back over to the shiplap part of it, I found a goose for pennies. They make great spacers. It was just the right distance to make that shadow line really pop. And I just glued them down and clamped them to the glue dried. I did leave the top one and I think the fifth or sixth one off because this is where I'm gonna be able to screw it to the wall. But you'll see that later. I chose half inch MDF for the back for two reasons. One, MDF is very stable and flat. It doesn't expand and contract with temperature changes. And the second is, I only had three quarters of an inch so that it wouldn't stick out past the door trim. Half inch and a quarter inch equals three quarters of an inch. And once the stain was dry, I got to add a coat of polyurethane. Now this is satin base, and while it's wet, it looks shiny. When it dries, it doesn't. It really makes the wood grain pop with that stain on it. After the poly was dry, I gently took it over and set it in place. And using the latest in anti-finish marring technology, an old t-shirt, I clamped it so that I would be able to screw the tabletop fasteners in from the bottom. Ah, what do you know, tabletop fasteners. So these slide down in the groove cut by the biscuit joiner and then screw to the bottom of the bench. This will allow for wood movement and my cut friend to take it off when he goes to paint and not worry about getting paint on the finish. When I got to his house, the first thing I had to do was gently remove some stubborn baseboard. Hmm, glad I brought this pry bar. And remove these light switches so that I could bring them out to the face of the shiplap. I did have to use longer number six screws because the ones that came out weren't long enough. Is that a screwdriver in your pocket or you just have, hmm, I'm not going there. So I cut the hole for the light switches. I didn't get it on film because my camera was pointed up at the night sky. And then we brought it inside, set it into place, and what do you know, it fit. Then I located the studs, drilled some holes, get out of my shot, countersunk some holes, and screwed it to the wall. Added glue to the back for the remaining shiplap pieces. And then, where is that? What did I do with that thing that? Oh, finish nails. I used finish nails to hold it tight to the wall while the glue dried. Now, I, I did use a punch and countersunk those so that he'd be able to cover those with some uh, wood filler before he painted it. And then, after a quick cleanup, I got to test it out. Now, I didn't take my shoes off. My friend provided this shot after I left because for a final shot, I'd once again accidentally push the photo button. Thanks for watching.